I scroll through forums in search of the most popular and debated topics regarding console and personal computer gaming. I mean, come on, there's thousands of those arguments out there. This was done for two reasons and they're gonna hurt to hear, so brace yourselves. Firstly, consoles are looking pretty hot right now in light of inflated graphics card pricing. It sucks to say, but in my opinion, it's true. Seems as though I've been mentioning this in every video lately, but I believe this point to be true. Many decent cards cost twice as much as entire consoles, PS4 Pros and Xbox One X is just a fact. Cryptocurrency mining has essentially priced us out of our own market, so many are jumping ship, at least for now. Hopefully they come back later. Second, it's no secret that console exclusives and even ports are generally better optimized than their PC counterparts. This is due to several factors, which we'll discuss shortly, but I've found that this argument in particular is a weapon of choice for many console... Uh, Fanboys. So what exactly is the reason for this? We'll discuss various examples and reasons for this in today's Minute Science episode. Be quiet, Dark Base 700 brings luxury and silence to the mainstream. Luxury thanks to subtle RGB integration, full case modularity, and even USB Type-C support. And silence thanks to three included Silent Wings 3 fans and sound damping foam all around. Click the link in this video's description for more details. Scrolling through Steam's hardware and software surveys for 2018, I found some interesting results. The most common graphics card used by far is a GTX 1060, followed closely by the Maxwell Gen GTX 960, then the 750Ti, and the 1050Ti. Now I kept scrolling and realized that the first AMD graphics card didn't show up until AMD Radeon R7 graphics. That's pretty vague, so it could be mobile graphics or a full-on discrete card. According to the Steam survey, only 0.62% of users gamed with one. That's surprisingly low. Now, these are merely surveys requiring consent, so take them with a grain of salt, but this trend sheds a bit of light on the first cause for lackluster PC game optimization. Everyone's sporting something different. That's kind of the joy of being on the side of PCs, right? You can customize things the way you want. Rather than design a game around one or two platforms, though, and specifications, computer programmers must ensure that their games meet the demands of a plethora of various hardware configurations. And on top of that, they can't control when new hardware hits the market. So future updates are almost always required to maintain that optimal gaming experience. This reason is linked to another in a sort of cause and effect relationship. Imagine designing a puzzle piece to fit in various positions. No matter what, you'll have a few gaps because not all of those holes are the same. So it's a compromise involved with serving multiple parties. These gaps indicate inefficiencies resulting from hardware utilization. In my video, How to Identify a CPU or GPU Bottleneck, which you can check out right here, by the way, I discuss how various hardware usages can impact frame rates. For example, City Skylines failed to utilize my second graphics card, which indicated that this game lacked SLI optimization. It still does, by the way. So dual graphics card support is is a different animal entirely, but it proves my point. Not all games run perfectly on all machines, and in theory, any game that doesn't fully utilize your hardware, which you can identify with a program like MSI Afterburner, is quote, unoptimized. Apart from these, however, there is one additional reason why games tend to play worse as a whole on PC, early access and premature launches. I want to use PUBG as an example here because it's by far the most popular as of January 2018 and is still terribly unoptimized. And no matter what anyone says, it's it's not a well-optimized game, period. Peak player usage does spike though around 2.5 million players, which is an impressive feat for any game, let alone one that consistently crashes. Don't get me wrong, I I love this game, I play it all the time. It's very addicting and fun to play with friends especially, but it needs serious work, which is why it's constantly down for maintenance. But ignoring the game's stability, PUBG also faces many hardware utilization issues, especially on AMD's side. For example, my Ryzen 7 1700X only averaged 31% CPU utilization during the entire course of one round of gameplay. By contrast, the i7-8700K averaged just over 50%. But frame rates aside, we're seeing a huge disparity between Intel and AMD utilization. It doesn't just stop with Ryzen 7, by the way. The Ryzen 5 1600X at 4 GHz was utilized roughly 20% less than the 8700K with identical RAM, frequency, and core count. The red team is vastly underutilized here, and that's a big sign of not only game bias, but game optimization issues. Now, this may have turned into an apparent PUBG bash fest at the end of this video, but I bring up these points to prove another point. 
PC gaming will always incur a higher performance variance. Pre-releases, multi-platform support, and hardware utilization play substantial roles here. We simply can't expect them all to work perfectly on every platform at all times, and that is why optimization will always be the Achilles heel of the PC gamer. If you have a comment or suggestion for a future topic in the Minute Science playlist or elsewhere, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment down below. I check them out especially within the first hour or so of the video's publishing, but I'll come back later and see what was very popular in the comment section and address those topics more than likely in future videos. If you like this video in particular, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click subscribe and if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.